Well, it's that time of year again, Christmas time. And in my life of big trucks and low bucks, we're having our annual Christmas get together. And of course, working on snow plow trucks. I end up in the bustle of Seattle traffic in the silver dually with no power steering or brakes. I challenge Fred Zanko in the 632 powered sniper to a race with one of my mega trucks. Then I end up stranded in another Dodge by Vancouver off of I-5 with a seized up transmission. We pull out a Ford with a Chevy and of course, find out if this year turns out to be a white suburban Christmas. Let's recap what happened on part one, days one through nine. On day one, we drove Carnage onto a Geo. On day two, we pulled out plow trucks and plow parts and got a few of them going. On day three, a person comes into the house. So we go rescue Stephen and his four. On day four, we look at this low bucks, six by six, two and a half ton Rockwell water truck. On day five, I get ready and sell some parts to generate funds to go pick up the first 2019 Christmas Suburban. We go and get a Buick and a Chrysler for new rally cars. Of course, we've got to test them out too. On the seventh day, we go pick out my Charlie Brown Christmas tree. and watch a little Mountain Mafia TV and I do a painting. On the eighth day, it's the mega truck race. Fred Zanko sniper versus one of my mega trucks. But only the one that runs and drives. On the ninth day, I'm almost stranded in the Tri-Cities. And on the 10th, we continue. So, something just seized up. I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe the transmission. I thought I felt something a little weird going down the highway, so I slowed down a bit. I didn't feel it. I thought, well, kind of felt a couple wind gusts, so I thought, well, maybe it's just the gust of wind came up and that's what I felt but it kind of felt like it was in the drive trains so I kept on going then all of a sudden I got something real bad some grinding going on and pushed the clutch in tried to slow down got over just in time to roll the stop here and it literally like locked up right here the only drivetrain component I have not checked recently is the transmission and something doesn't feel right in the shifter anymore and there's some noise when I let the clutch out, just sitting there in neutral. So, transmission was one of the main reasons I bought this truck, the MV5600. But I didn't uh, check the fluid on it. So, maybe it ran out of fluid and I've toasted a very expensive transmission. With the idea of uh, unloading the Suburban so I can drive it, I'm not really comfortable driving all the way home trying to tow a one-ton dually on this heavy trailer with a three-quarter ton Suburban that I've never driven before. But I can't even really drive this at all down the road because I just remembered this CV axle It's just hanging there 
because the bolts are missing. And it's not that I need the CV axle or four wheel drive to move it. It's the fact that the hub is always spinning. So the CV axle is constantly spinning. That's why that boot is all tore up because they were driving it around locally with that spinning. And I can't go down the highway with that just rotating at highway speeds. I don't have bolts. I have them at home on a parts rig. So the only thing I can think of is taking half the bolts off of the other side CV axle, which I think they're held on by uh, six. I take three out of this, put three in that, that'll at least hold it in place and let it spin where it's not rattling around and dragging on things. And then I can drive the Suburban, I hope, but I still need to figure out If I can get possibly someone else to come hook onto the trailer and get the Dodge on the trailer, something did seize up, but I was also driving at freeway speeds. So if this was out of fluid, it was really hot. I'm crossing my fingers that maybe if I can get some sort of fluid brought here, dump into the transmission, and now that it's cool off, uh, it might may or may not be seized up i don't know still uh if it's not seized up from uh from the heat and now that it's cold and i got some fluid in it obviously it's it's still toast but it, hopefully i'm hoping that's enough that i can put it in a gear and freely drive it onto the trailer if i can get to that point We got the CV axle bolted up, Suburban's off the trailer. I'm now disassembling everything, getting the shifter out of the way so I can move this console so I can get the shift tower off the top of the transmission. That's gonna, uh, I'm not gonna see all the damage, but that's gonna kind of give me a hint as to uh, if it's pretty hot in there and dry. Um, also, whatever fluids I might have with me, which I don't really know what I have, I may try to dump down in there just uh, just for some sort of a lu lubrication in case I do try to start this and move it. It's got something there, even if bearings and stuff are toast, at least uh, it won't be metal on metal if there's something in there. Just enough to hopefully drive it on the trailer and if it's completely seized then uh, I'm pretty much out of luck. But all the fluid back on the transfer case I was assuming was from some seals and gaskets there and I was keeping it topped off but uh, I should have paid closer attention to the transmission itself but can't woulda coulda shoulda now right, let's see if there's anything visible pulling this off it smells it's oh it smells absolutely horrible definitely uh, something burnt up in there what I've done now is dumped a quart of ATF that I had and some motor oil, some 1540. Uh, just basically as something for this transmission to have in it. So it's not metal on metal. I know it's already damage is done. There's no fixing it, but I'm hoping with something in there, I can maybe get it to spin free enough to go into a gear if it'll still have a first or something and uh, maybe move now that it's cooled off, had an hour or so to cool off. So, kind of a scary moment of truth here. All I want to do is see if it's uh, seized up or if it'll still move, if whatever's welded itself together in there will break loose. I'm expecting the worst, which is stuff's welded together in there, it's seized even though I dumped some fluid in there. I guess we'll find out. This is neutral. And in neutral, we're moving. I don't know what gear we're... We're uh, obviously welded into some sort of a forward gear here. 
what gear that is, I'm not absolutely sure. Got it to go into the second position now. I might have broke loose whatever was welded. Ooh, there's neutral and it does not sound good. <laughs> Definitely some not nice noises in there, but now we've got, let's see if we got, I don't know if I got reverse, but. I think I've, uh, I've got it freed up enough now with the fluid that's in there to uh, drive itself on the trailer. Okay, so I got the trailer unhooked from this truck. That's where we move forward. I'm gonna move Dodge forward here and off to the side so I can back the Suburban up to the trailer, hook it up, pull it in front of this and try to drive this on the trailer. So the problem with this Suburban, I'm told, besides the CV axle being out, is uh, once it warms up, it wants to die at an idle. So it's going to be interesting because i got to keep the thing running as an automatic, which is a foot and brake action once it warms up. I haven't even found out how bad it is yet because I've literally drove it this far, on the trailer, off the trailer, hooked up to the trailer and past the dually. Definitely not a big fan of this, but I gotta get it off the side of the road. I'm gonna have to take it slow, cautious. These tires are bulging pretty good, like they could use some air. I've got no way to put air in. So I got it loaded on the trailer, strapped down. Try to chase for a couple of the heavier things out of the front of the cab of that into the front of the Suburban. Unfortunately the Suburban's full of rims and tires that came with it, a cherry picker and other stuff so I can't put more stuff in here because it's already pretty full. So I'm going to take it slow, slow and easy, and uh, I guess we got to learn all the quirks about this Suburban now. Looks like my first issue is getting this door to close. That was one of the things on the things they said is the door wouldn't stay closed and she'd be driving it down the road and the door would fly open. And uh, I fiddled with the latch when I loaded it on the trailer and it got it to latch just fine. But now, nope. So, seat belt's on and uh, yeah, door is going to be loose. The problem now is finding a gap in this traffic that I can actually pull out into and then unfortunately slow down because I'm not going to be going full speed with this setup. Somehow I always manage to find the most expensive fuel wherever I'm stuck at getting fuel at. I need air. So well, now it's time to get air. Well, I've already put a dollar fifty's worth of air in this to get up to 60 PSI. I gotta go to 80 on both rears. So, just round up some more change from my man purse. Put another dollar fifty in, let's go get some more air. Just got air in the 
rear tires of the Suburban, so they're up to pressure, towing the truck that should be towing the Suburban. I've gotten offered a couple places to take this. The original plan was to drop the truck and trailer, limp it there with the Suburban, but we'll see how the uh, Suburban pulls here with the uh, Gas Hog 454 throttle body. $500 Suburban and uh, the driver's side door doesn't shut so I've got to watch when I corner because the driver's door will just swing open so lots of uh, lots of fun This is twice now that I've gotten this door to actually shut and latch on this Suburban. <coughs> I can't uh, I can't open it from the inside because the inside handle's busted, but the window does work so I can roll it down and open it uh, from the outside handle when I'm on the inside. It's just tricky to get it to close and latch, uh, but I got it to latch twice. I'm happy about that because the first leg of the trip I was driving along and the doors just kind of there flopping open and the wind was blowing it open and I was trying to hold it closed anyways last night the AC compressor on that truck seized up when I went inside to uh, use a restroom and grab something to eat real quick and I came out and it wouldn't start because the AC compressor was uh, seized up and it actually was dragging the motor enough that the starter wouldn't turn it over. Took us a while to figure that out. Got another belt on it, rerouted the, and bypassed the compressor and it was fine. Then the tranny went out. Um, now I made the mistake of uh, using the restroom and getting something to eat real quick on my way home with this uh, $500 Suburban that I've never driven before until today that uh, I've relearned that the wipers only work on high, which actually they did tell me that. I didn't care when I bought it because I wasn't going to be driving it down the road. So now we are going to find out what went wrong when I went inside because something had to have gone wrong, obviously. Uh, seized accessory on this engine, dead battery. Uh, let's find out. Holy moly, it started. So. My door latched, <clears throat> the Suburban, the cheap Suburban that needed a bunch of work is still running. It's towing the dually backwards from the original plan and uh, I'm going to finish eating something here and uh, get back on the road and take my time to get home. big block it's thirsty and uh, I almost I was like why the heck won't the nozzle fit in this thing I'm trying to pump diesel because I've been driving diesels everywhere I guess there's a reason why they have the, the slightly larger nozzle on the diesel so you can't do that so the people that forget don't screw up Anyways, I also find it somewhat ironic that uh, the two main things about this Cummins diesel truck that I wanted and liked the best about it and was the reasons that I was going to keep it together and not get rid of it is, the, for one, the MV5600 six-speed transmission and number two, the fact that the air conditioning worked. Well, in less than 24 hours, both have been destroyed completely. 
So I used the door again. <clears throat> now I gotta try to close it. window down so I can let myself out of the driver's door. I have to say that the idea to tow the dually with the Suburban on the side of I-5 yesterday was mainly as a emergency situation to get off the side of the road and get away from traffic and uh, I didn't expect this to tow very well considering I'd never driven it before other than onto the trailer had only heard it run for maybe a couple minutes. They told me the list of problems that the Suburban had, which I thought were going to be actually worse off than they are. I mean, the door doesn't shut, the wipers only work on high, and they said it kept stalling out, um, mainly at an idle, but I figured it might be just stalling out at random times, but it kept going the whole way. It actually went down the road really well, handled really well, so... I got all the way home without any problems at all. Now let's see if this thing will start. <clears throat> uh, check some fluids first. We learned something about that. I have the battery I put in it yesterday, which was the battery that I brought with to put in it, which ended up in the Dodge for a short bit. We are still within the operating range. We're good on coolant. Belts and everything look intact. We'll see if this battery held up or if this has got some sort of electrical draw that killed the other battery. It fires right up. And it towed well enough that I'm ready to venture the rest of the way to the other place and get this thing all the way to the shop. And here's why I didn't have much room to put much more stuff back here. So after one more fuel stop and two more times of trying to shut this driver's door, I'm finally on the way back home to the shop. I'm gonna get ready for this weekend's Christmas get together. I gotta make it up the hill. Oh, Mud's got the Liberty going. So this thing would tow that this up the hill fine if four-wheel drive would kick in. And I just used four-wheel drive to get out of a situation back there where I pulled over and it worked. So I know the Suburban will go up this hill and tow this no problem. The problem with this hill is that if you don't have enough traction and you do have to stop, you don't get a second chance. Um, especially with the corners and the grade. I mean, it's not that steep, but when it's this type of consistency, like I've done this before, made it so far, and before you stop moving forward, you're already sliding backwards if you got something heavy on a trailer. And at that point, you're pretty much screwed and there's no stopping. 
I had to ditch a truck and trailer in the uphill ditch. Thankfully, I was able to do that one one time. So I'm not going to risk doing that here when we've got uh, this thing will probably drive the, the less than mile the rest of the way. Of course, now after all that and the batteries were not a problem on this and and everything else is fine on this and it's running fine it's just the transmission now the batteries are dead i'm going to use the liberty here the christmas liberty parked next to the christmas suburban to jump start this so now that we got the weight off the trailer the suburban should be able to go up the hill mud's going to drive that I'm going to take the silver dually and Jake's going to follow in the Liberty. And this way I got to drive this a little and see uh, how bad the transmission is. I got a little mix of other fluids in it, but at least it's something. So here we're, we got to find out all the wonderful noises and see if it disintegrates on me. This right here is why I didn't want to attempt pulling this much weight with the Suburban just in case I broke loose traction. To go around these corners, there's a little bit of steeper grade here. If you start spinning out there and it starts sliding backwards and over the edge, you go over the bank and there's really no stopping you until you, you're over the bank and wedged against the trees. No matter where I go or how long I'm gone, I'm always happy to come back home. We've got both 2019 White Christmas Suburbans here. One from last week, the 90, that came from Linwood or uh, Edmonds, Washington, and the 95 that came from Longview, Washington. This is the one that I thought needed more work according to the ad and just my guesses. And This is the one I thought was maybe a simpler fix and it turned out to be a flop of that because this one drove all the way home. Still got a few issues but this one actually uh, we got it here and it needs more work. It needs a, at least a head gasket. Might just do a motor swap in it. Um, but anyways uh, both were still good deals uh, Both are still decent Suburbans for the money uh, They've got a few issues of course But all fixable This one's a half ton This one's a three quarter ton This one's a 350 This one's a 454 4L80E This one's got a 700R4 So we're ready today for the Christmas get together We'll see if we got any passengers Well, I guess John and Bill got stuck up on the hill. We're gonna have to take the old Christmas Suburban. So we're trying to go on one of the back roads on the hill here to find John's truck that's against a tree. And the Suburban may end up against the tree. Oh. <laughs> there it is, we found it. So no serious body damage yet try to prevent that from being more. I'm going to have to use the winch and winch the rear end uphill and try to pivot this down and go back down that way. So we went to rig up the winch and of course the winch remote is nowhere to be found. So I had to try to back up and pull but I'm sliding into other trees so and I'm trying to go uphill backwards with boggers on the rear. and the Liberty stuck somewhere else. So the original point of this venture was to clear some dead trees here, opening up this road. So 
I guess we're gonna do that anyways. What are you thinking? Here we go. That tree's leaning way too far that way. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Right where you're at, she goes this way. Real so, head. I don't really like, like Bill's saying how the tree's kind of leaning towards the cab of the truck. Hey. Well, let's, uh... Do you think I can... So, I, uh... That didn't really work. <laughs> Hitch a ride with Dale and Razor and go down to the shop and try to find a winch remote for the winch on the Suburban. Okay, we're trying to get turned around here between trees and stumps and logs. remote in the shop. We're going to run back up there and see if we're going to winch John's truck up. Does anyone want to go pull out a Jeep Liberty? <laughs> So now that I got the winch remote with me, we're gonna run back up, winch John's truck out of trouble, and then we're gonna go winch out the Liberty. Try again. But we gotta get back down below because Robert Schmidt just pulled up in my other truck and trailer. I guess the trailer tire lost its tread somewhere on the way up. Oh, there it is. I guess we still have some of it. Yeah. 3,600 feet outside my driveway. Looks like I gotta change this tire out too. Well, we finally made it to our last and final day. The 12th day of Christmas. What's with all the Jeeps? Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. They don't know yet. I just oh. came up with that. Was there some sort of a Jeep convention or something yeah. today? Yeah. We're trying to see whose Jeep is bigger. Whose Jeep what? Whose Jeep is bigger and it's Trevor's. Yeah. Trevor's got the big Jeep on property. Yes, sir. We found a blue, though. Yeah, That's yeah we found a boo-boo. Ben! A what? A blue. <laughs> it's now time to get everyone together to go for our annual Christmas drive in the mountains.
last several years for me and a few others that knew him. This is the memorial run for Greg Keithley, a friend of ours that passed away. And in a way it honors him to be doing the fun things that we all used to do together. Looks like Trevor bent his tie rod. This little sc uh, <laughs> the tongue. Janelle was looking at Clancy's tiny, too tall sticker that he stuck on my spur. I think you can get it if you They all went down, he's gonna take the more stock rigs on the easier route since they can't really make it up this hill. I'm heading on with the Suburban, followed by Trevor and Cody, to where we're going to hopefully meet up with everyone else at this intersection. There's probably no way anyone's going to make it, is there? We got brushies the whole way, that was just like, I was going to turn around and go see. I don't know what, the, oh, woodpeckers. There's one right now working at it. Oh. Could they really do that much damage, I suppose? I so. don't know, because look, it's over here, too. There's like three or four trees over here, too, that are the same. There's literally one just pecking at it right now. Yeah, possibly. But is that their goal, is to just peck, peck the bark off? I wouldn't think they could do that much, but, man. That's a lot of bark for a bird to... Well, yeah, off. and then Alan, did you see over here? There's like four or five trees over here that they've started on. Oh. Yeah. They're in the now he's stuck. Uh, That's hey. old people problems. <laughs> old people. Oh. Whoa, hey, I will hold that. So we've ran back to pick up everyone else that couldn't make it. He's got his jumper cables, he's got an axe. He's ready to go. We got Bill jump started, we're about ready. Say, why would it be woodpeckers? I don't know. Looking at it, we're doing it. I feel we have much more traffic. You've been in here the whole time. Yeah, yeah. It's everyone else. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one.
Christmas has many different meanings to many different people. From traditional beliefs to the non-traditional. From big families to individuals. Christmas is a joyous time for many and a difficult time for others. I'll never have lived through the struggles that others have suffered, but I've suffered through many of my own and realize regardless of what life puts us through, no matter the time of year, we have the ability to make the best of things in life if we let go of the negativity that holds us down. It doesn't mean to forget those problems or hardships or losses. It means that we can move forward having learned from them, gaining strength, and always living for those who may not be with us here anymore.